Now we're going to make the distinction that the Carnot engine and how we defined entropy was for reversible processes. But if you look at real engines, they're not reversible. In other words, to go through some cycle, it'll take some finite time for a real engine. It would have to take an infinite time for a, a reversible engine. A real engine is not reversible. So when I want to make the association as irreversible processes, correspond to real processes, things, engines, and cycles you can go through in everyday life. Now, with that, let's consider this system. Here's uh, state one, and here's state two. Let's take the system from state one to state two by a reversible pathway, and then let's go back from uh, state two to state one by some irreversible process. Now let's look at the, say, the change in internal energy delta U. That will be equal to zero because you're ending up where you started from. U is a state function. And that will be the sum of this process, the reversible delta U for the reversible process, plus this delta U for the irreversible process. Let's rewrite that as Q reversible. Let's actually do the infinitesimal here, DQ reversible plus dw reversible. That's what that is from the first law of thermodynamics. Let's do the same thing for the irreversible pathway. So this would be dq irreversible plus dw irreversible. Now we know from everyday experience or from our Carnot engine or uh, PV expansion and so on, I want to make the general statement that dw irreversible, the amount of work you can get out from an irreversible process is always less than dw for a reversible process. In other words, the most amount of work you can get out is, is by going through a reversible process. Any work you get out from an irreversible process is less than that. Or in other words, let me just make this idea that irreversible corresponds to real. So any work you can get out from a real process is always less than d the work you can get out from that ideal process, the reversible process. Now if that's the case, this implies that the heat transferred in a irreversible process will be always greater than the heat transferred in a reversible process. So we know that there's a, this is less than that, so in order to get this thing to balance out the real process, we'll have to be the Q irreversible or real will have to be greater than the ideal. What does that mean? I think we're uh, down to here. I hope I convinced you that. If not, uh, take your questions to uh, Wednesday's lecture or Wednesday uh, evening lecture. Now let's consider an isolated system. Let's consider in fact the universe. So this is universe, which we're going to assume is isolated. In other words, there are no other universes around here which can exchange energy with our universe assumption. If it's isolated, can't change energy, then dq has to, e you cannot change dq, dq has to equal zero. So dq reversible has to equal zero. What does that mean? Well, the ds, which we said was defined as dq reversible over t, that also has to equal zero. So that for an isolated system like the universe, this implies that ds, reversible, we'll put reversible here, has to equal zero for an isolated system. Now, we said that dq irreversible is greater than dq reversible, so that uh, dq irreversible over t is greater than dq reversible over t, and that is equal to zero. So this implies that dq irreversible over t is greater than zero for an isolated system. Or in other words, this implies that delta s or ds is greater than zero for real processes in an isolated system. So if we now draw our universe as uh, a process occurs, in other words, as time goes on, ds will always be greater than zero for a real process, for an irreversible process. 
Now, let's take our universe and divide it into a system and surroundings. So here's our system and here's our surroundings. And we know that the sum of system and surroundings, ds, uh, which is equal to ds of the system plus ds of the surroundings, that has to be greater than zero for a real process. And let's go back. So one, another statement of the second law of thermodynamics is that ds is equal to zero for reversible, ds is greater than zero for irreversible, and again this is for isolated systems. One way to actually also say that is ds is greater than or equal to zero where equal is associated with reversible processes and greater than is associated with irreversible processes. This is one statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy of the universe is increasing or entropy of an isolated system is always increasing. Now note that we just said that ds of the system plus ds of the surroundings if it's not an isolated system, but the total, of course, is, that's the universe, has to be just greater than zero for real processes. This does not necessarily mean that a ds of the system always has to be greater than zero. Does not mean. In fact, what this means in general is that the system plus surroundings has to be greater than zero. But in general, I'll just make that point, in general, the second law does not mean that the entropy of the system has to increase with time. All right, let's look at an example of that. Uh, let's look at our bodies. So initially our bodies start as a single cell. And let's take this is our body and that will have a certain amount of entropy. As we grow, now we've grown arms and legs and all sorts of things. So as time goes on, we're now here and now we have a complete system here it would appear that the entropy of our bodies is decreasing with time. So entropy, so what are we doing? We're pumping out uh, heat, we're maintaining our uh, system. Does the entropy of our body decrease with time? Well the answer is yes it does, but that doesn't violate the second law of thermodynamics because what is happening is here's our system, this is our body, and what we're doing is we're pumping out entropy out here so we're decreasing our entropy, but we're increasing the entropy of the surroundings even more. So the entropy change of our body plus the entropy change of our surroundings, like the air, the world, and so on, has to be greater than zero. So if this is less than zero, this has to be greater than zero, and it also has to be greater than zero in absolute magnitude more than the entropy we're pumping out of our body. So we're creating additional entropy in the universe, our surroundings. In fact, one might argue that that's a definition of a life. In fact, that's an argument that uh, Schrodinger, who we'll uh, talk about in the second part of the course in quantum mechanics, made in uh, the late 1940s. That life itself is the ability of a system to pump out entropy, to decrease its entropy. Because when we're dead, well, we're dead and our body no longer can fight against the second law of thermodynamics. This is the uh, second law of thermodynamics. The entropy of the universe is increasing. The entropy change of a system and surroundings increases with time. Second law of thermodynamics.